Good morning. Good morning. How are we this morning? This is the day the Lord has made. There's something popping behind me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to rejoice. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We're in the house of the Lord. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We are going to have revival today. Amen. If you come expecting anything other than a visitation of the Holy Spirit, time to check it at the door because God is fixing to touch your life. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Hansi will come and he will sing in a little bit. He will bring the word, but our worship team is going to lead us into the presence of God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for today and opportunity to be in your house. Father, we come hungry and thirsting for a visitation of your spirit in this house today. This is your house. Crown it, Lord God, with your presence and glory and have your way. Father, revive my heart. Revive my soul. Revive everything that's within me, Lord God. Because I am hungry and thirsty for a fresh touch from heaven. So have your way in this house today, I pray. Father, touch this worship team. As we go into a place of worship, and Lord, we just invite you to come and have your way in this house today. I pray for Brother Hansi and Jeanette, Lord God, as they prepare to minister to us today, Lord God, that the word would speak life into our hearts, we pray. And it's in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Let's worship the Lord. There's revival that is spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, that is lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of the gospel song. Oh, you can lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing that'll steal my joy. I got an old church fire singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and a beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I feel restored. There ain't nothing going to steal my joy. No, there When the valleys that I wander turn to mountains that I can't climb, oh, you're with me, never leave me. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and a beautiful. I once was lost, 
Push out your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. When all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. It's your breath in our lives, so we pour out. We pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. So I'll cherish the 
Because of the victory found at the cross, we too can grab a hold of that and celebrate today that same victory. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for that old rugged cross. And I ask you, Lord, to continue to have your way in this house today and bless. Lord God, touch, speak to, change lives, I pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready to take up our tithes and offering. And uh, just like we did last year, we do one. When we have something like this, our Sunday morning offering and tithes are going to be obviously for your tithes and offering. And then going forward uh, tonight through Wednesday night, as Hanji continues to come back, we're going to take up everything that we receive during that. those services are going to go to our evangelist. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if I could get a couple of volunteers to help me take up an offering, a couple of our guys to come help me. Katie, would you help me? Hallelujah. Bucky, if you would help me, I'd appreciate it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Again, this is for our tithes and offering. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning and the opportunity to give back to you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for speaking to hearts today. And I thank you, Lord, that you're going to bless this, multiply it, and use it, Lord God, for the building of your kingdom. God, this is your house and this is your day, Lord. I pray that you just change lives here today. Lord, I'm looking forward to, to the word that's going to be preached. And Lord, I pray that it just speaks deeply into our hearts and then we grasp it, Lord God, and we walk in it. And it's in Jesus' name and all of God's people say it. Amen. 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 As they pass the plate before we have Brother Hansi come up, does anyone have a testimony this morning? They want to stand up and give praise to God. Hallelujah. Anyway, now I also thank the Lord for the old lady cross. My son-in-law made me a plate saying that the cross And my salvation. And you know, that, that does something to me today to think of what the price that Jesus paid so yes. we could have eternal life. And that is not something to take lightly. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, you don't have to think about the cross. You do have to think about the cross. Mm -hmm. Because you have to go through the cross. If it wasn't for the cross, we wouldn't have a resurrection. And if it wasn't for the cross, we wouldn't have the blood of Jesus Christ that saved us souls and gave us eternal really? life. And I thank God today for the blood and the cross. And I also thank him for his blessing that he's given us, our family. I went to granddaughter's wedding yesterday, and I'm going to a baby shower today. So I praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Anyone else before we have our evangelist come on? Hallelujah. Thank you. I want to praise the Lord for keeping my grandchildren safe. Um, my granddaughter and grandson live in uh, live in Panama uh, City, and they had the, they went through the hurricane. They by the time they found out how bad it was going to be, they didn't have time to get out on the road. The road was already people were still on the highway. Amen. And so my daughter just prayed that be safe. We all everybody prayed that they would be safe and that the trees would fall away from the house. <clears throat> and the trees all fell in different directions away from the house. Praise the Lord. And they were saved and they didn't have high water. And uh, my grandson, he was living in a, a rented house and a tree came through the back mm. of the house and um, uh, damaged the bedroom and all. But they had places to go. They didn't have, they didn't have uh, water or light. Um, 
couple of days ago, but they did get some phone photos, and they are back working. And um, I don't know if they've got the uh, electricity or water back on now, but they can leave it at home. And, you know, it's just like praise the Lord. So mm -hmm. I just praise the Lord for taking care of them because they have a lot of, a lot of really bad damage. Amen. So I just praise the Lord for that. Amen. God's good. Amen. And God answers prayers, and God takes care of His children, and God takes care of us. Amen. He does. Brother Hansi, if you will come on and go. You, most of you have met this brother, know this brother, know his ministry, and and uh, you know it's going to be a good day. But man, I just love this brother and his wife, and I'm so glad he's going to be here today, and he's going to share with us. And, and we're just going to let him have his liberty. Amen. Amen. We don't have a clock in here, and I can so. What time do I need to be finished? You get finished when you get finished. Amen. Amen. We let God have His way in this house. So y'all give him a hand and welcome him this morning. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, give your praise team and nice big clap. Thank you for your worship. Your praise is coming. Amen. Thank you guys. I really appreciate that. And um, I know there's not a clock, but I got a wife. <laughs> and when she says, when she does this, then I got to stop. You know, so. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm making her sound like she's a vicious woman, but she is a vicious woman, but she's my vicious woman. And she's here this morning, she's gonna sing with me. Thank you guys for inviting us again. We really um, appreciate that. She's gonna sing two songs. Outside there is a table, and if just like all the other years that I've been here, you can go out there. I've got some Jesus caps. I've got the two books that I've written, King Saul's Spirit and the Armor of God. And then our music that we sing is music that we write ourselves, so it's our own songs, it's on our CDs. You can go there to Jeanette and just give her a high five and say hi and support us if you can um, at the table. And then what I'll do is I'll do exactly what I did last year. I tape every sermon on a CD so some people, I'll make it available to people. Sometimes you want to listen to the sermon again and sometimes you want to buy it for somebody else because you think there's people that need to hear it you can buy the whole series or you can just buy individual uh, but you've got to go to Jeanette and put your name down is that okay with you just give me a nice big smile this is your church where Jesus is you got to give me a smile you guys all is, is everybody alive this is not a funeral <laughs> home where people are dead okay if it wasn't for that blood, you were right. Then where, where, where would we be? We thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. 
set us free. Amen? Amen? Okay. Holy Spirit, I thank you this morning that you are an awesome God and a mighty God. Thank you, Father God, that the people have come. Thank you for the praise and the worship. Thank you that we could just lift you up and sing songs to you. We give you all glory and all honor for that. Come now, Holy Spirit, this morning and help me as I preach through the Holy Spirit and not from my flesh and let the people listen with the ears of the Holy Spirit and not from their flesh, so they can understand the word, to get it into their spirit, man, and start doing it. Help us this week, Lord, to understand this word. And we thank you that your word is going to help us, set us free, deliver us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. In God's whole kingdom, the whole spiritual world, say, Mummy. Did I put what on? Did I put this thing on? It is taking me as my love, dove. Are you, are you interrupting me again? Do you want a kiss? No. <laughs> she usually wants, when she wants a kiss, she interrupts me, so I've got to walk up there and kiss her. And I love it when she interrupts me. I've been married for 300 years this year. Okay, 30 years, I'll just put a zero onto it because it feels like it. <laughs> I could have lost her two years ago when she almost died. 
And I said to somebody, man, why on earth would I want God to take her home? It took me 300 years to train her like I want her. And now God wants to take her away. I said, no, God, come on. I don't want to train somebody else. I've got this one where I want her. All right, that's just a bit of a joke. Guys, in the Bible, there are hundreds of promises that God has given his children. Amen. Are you all aware of that? Yeah. That the Bible promises salvation, healing, deliverance, protection. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I love you with an everlasting love. Amen. Promises the Holy Spirit. Come on. I can keep on going the scripture after scripture that God has promised every Christian, every believer in the Bible. Amen. I am sensing and I am realizing that we as Christians are not taking hold of those promises. Amen. We are not going after the problem, uh, after the promises. We are running after the problems. We are not looking at what God has promised us. We are focusing on what the problem is. You see, now it becomes quiet. Why? Because when I listen to Christians speak, all I hear them talking about is about what's wrong, what's not right. Things are never going to change. Now, that doesn't mean if you come out for prayer that you cannot say, listen, this is my problem, I have cancer, or the doctor's giving me this diagnosis. Yes, you come, you tell what the problem is, and then after you've said what the problem is, then you've got to focus on what the promise says. The promise says if you are sick, God promises you healing. The, the, the problem says you've got a ma marriage problem. God says I can restore that marriage. The problem says you have financial problems. God says if you pay your tithe, I'll bless you. Amen. The problem says, yeah, but my children are on drugs. God says I can deliver them. Amen. There's a lot of promises in the Bible that you and I have not gotten yet. Are you with me? Amen. So I thought about this. It's exactly, we are doing exactly what the Israelites did when they were promised the land of Canaan, the promised land. Remember the, when God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? He said, Abraham, get out of your country, from your father's house, go to the land that I will show you, Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. And that's the land that I'm going to give your children. It took 430 years before Moses took the Israelites out of Egypt on their way to the land of Canaan. And they were going to get the promise that God had promised them. Amen. Did they get that promise? Yeah. No. Uh -huh. The children though. Yeah. They did not get it. I love my, both my daughters. I love my grandchildren. But I don't want them to be healed, to be blessed, to be prospered. And Papa's walking around in the desert. Yeah. Come on. I want to go with my children to the promise that God has given us. And I don't care how old we are, how young we are, those promises are for everybody. Why are we not taking hold, or why is our mindset not, I want that promise? Why is our mindset, well, you know, maybe I just, this is just the way that God wants it to be, you know. I mean, I've just got to suffer with diabetes. It's one of those things. My, my whole family had diabetes, you know, so I just got to go through it. Why do we have that attitude while well, God has promised us healing? Why aren't you saying, yeah, my family had diabetes for all these years, and now I've got diabetes, but guess what? The Word of God says that I can be healed. And go and get that promise. Now the Israelites, when Moses took them out, and God said, come and get them, they left Egypt blessed. They had money, they had jewelry, they had everything. The Egyptians said, just take it and get out of there after the ten plagues. And there they went. Towards their promise. But guess what happened? All of a sudden the Red Sea shows up. An obstacle. And the one guy said, you, you, you think we got problems with the Red Sea? Just look behind you. And they looked behind them and there was dust. The Egyptians were following them. So they were in the middle of two obstacles. And guys coming, going to kill them. And they can't go nowhere because there's a big Red Sea in, in front of them. You see, and then, Satan is so good at this. 
that when we find out we have a problem, but God can heal us or God can set us free or prosper us, and we go on our start going towards our promise, that Satan will always put a red sea in front of you. And the devil will chase you and try and get you in the caught up in the middle where you give up, where you get discouraged, where you don't know what's going on, etc. etc. And getting my point here. <laughs> and we give up. For some other reason, we don't pursue the promise. Now look, do you have your Bibles with you? Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. I want to read you a scripture. Okay. They, they get to the Red Sea, Moses and the people of, of Israel. And Exodus 14, 15 says this. Okay, I, I, I didn't give um, scriptures to her. I forgot to do that. Do, do you guys still do scriptures? Yeah, can she do that for me? What's her name again? Exodus 14, 15. Can I just call her Blondie again? 14, 1, 4, 1, 5. I know I'm, I'm speaking English, so you cannot understand English, baby. Like most of these people can't understand English as well. Don't worry about it. And the Lord said to Moses when they got to the Red Sea, look what God says to Moses. Why are you crying to me? Can, can you hear Moses? No. You said you're going to go to the land of Canaan. Now there's a Red Sea. And there's the Egyptians are following me. God said, why are you crying to me? What do you tell him to do? Tell the people to go forward. You see, we don't go forward towards our promise. We start crying and go, God, why? God, why did you give me this? God, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense, Lord. And God, how long should they wait? God said, hey, why are you crying to me? Go forward. Yeah, but God, there's a red sea. Yeah, but God, the doctor said, duh, I'm going to open the red sea for you. Come on. But we don't know how God's going to open the problem for us, so we start crying. But God said there's a promise. Yeah, but what about the red sea? Do you think that there's a red carpet going to be laid out for you so you can get healed? So you can get your victory, you can get your financial problems, your son's just going to get off drugs, you see? You think David, the devil's just going to lay out a red carpet? No, he's going to put a red sea in your way. But God can take that problem and split it open so you can go through it. And then use the red sea to destroy your enemy. God used the problem split it up and they walk through and then use the problem to destroy the enemy. Blondie, go to Jeremiah. Can you go to Jeremiah for me? You can try. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 7. Verse 22, 23, and 24. So God opens the Red Sea. <clears throat> and there goes the Egyptians. They go through, I, I, I mean, there's right, go through the Red Sea, the, God closes the Red Sea, and the Egyptians are killed. So there they go. Yeah! On our way to our promise. So maybe the devil puts some obstacle inside in front of you, and you get through it. So he said to Jeremiah, God spoke to Jeremiah in chapter 7, he said, I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offering and sacrifices. So he didn't talk to them about offerings and sacrifices when you brought them out of the land of Egypt. What did he do? Verse 23, he said, but this is what I commanded them. Say, obey my voice. <laughs> and I will be your God. And you shall be my people. Oh boy, that promise is still there for you and I, but are we obeying his voice? Are we doing what he's telling us to do? You should be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Verse 24. Yet, or just put it in American English, but they did not obey or incline their ear, but they followed the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts and went, what? Not 
That's our theme for the week. We're going forward. Come on, brother. Not backwards. How's that? Is that okay with you guys? Everybody say that loud. Say, we're going forward. Not backwards. Come on. It's time for the church to start getting this attitude. I'm going forward towards the promises. I'm not going backwards and losing and going back to my problem, going back to my old habits, going back to the old, let's just go, you know, let's just accept that this is the way it's going to be. No, there is a promise that can nullify the problem. And it's time for you and I to get hold of this and not go backwards. Some people have been sitting at home right now that have gone so far backwards that they have backslidden because of a promise that has not happened. Somebody didn't get healed, something, and they died. Their children are still on drugs and on prison. Why didn't God do something? Duh, people have got choices. And God's not going to make you stop drinking or drugging. God's not going to make you do something. Because you've got a free will. And Satan is still on this earth. And he's killing and stealing and destroying. Yeah, but why isn't God doing something? Because God's already done everything. The old rugged cross. He's already done everything. He's given you Jesus. He's given you the blood. He's given you the name of Jesus. The word of God. The sword of the spirit. Which we should be using, swinging around. He's given us the most incredible power on earth. The resurrection power of the Holy Ghost is given to everybody. And we're not using it. So what else do you want God to do? God's given you and I authority dominion to reign on this earth. Yeah, but why isn't God stopping this or this or this bad stuff that's happening? Because it's not heaven. It's earth. Yeah. And Satan is still the God of this earth. And we have to fight the fight of faith, the good fight of faith, yeah. and go through this thing. Why did God not stop Stephen from being stoned? Why did God not stop John from being put in a pot of oil? We are on this earth. And Satan is the God of this earth, blinding the minds of the people. Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. Amen. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, John chapter 10, 10. But I've come to give you life. So what do we do? We just got to go forward and not backwards. Don't you dare go and accept what the doctor tells you about cancer or heart problems or diabetes. No, there is an answer. There is life. Amen. Don't you dare go back and say, well, our church has just been 20 people for five years. That's just most probably what God wants. Where did you read that in the Bible? Come on, God wants the church to prosper and grow. So stop going forward and say, oh, but Hansi, we are going forward. Yeah, but the devil's slapping you back. So this week we're going to see how we can, we can go forward and not go backwards. Amen. Even the Bible says, do not, a dog goes back to his vomit. Right. Come on. We are children of God. Hallelujah. I'm battling the same problem. My wife's uh, alive after two years before, when she almost died, but she's still got a few after effects. What are we doing? We're just going forward. Come on, have you ever seen these John Wayne movies? <laughs> and all this stuff. And then you see this guy walking in the, in the desert and he got all blistered up and then he's looking up at the sun and, he, and then he's almost dying. He takes his bottle of water and, and there's nothing inside of it. So the guy's going to die. Am I right? And then when he looks up about 50 yards away from him, there's a palm tree and a pond of water. Oh my goodness. But he, can, but he cannot get there because then he walks all in the dust. And there he lies. So what does he do? He's got two choices. I'm going to lie down there and die. Or he puts his hands in the ground and he scratches himself inch by inch, but he gets to that water because he wants to live. Do you want that promise? Do you want life? Do you want healing? Or are you just going to lie down there and go backwards and just say, well, I'm just going to stay here. 
even if you go inch by inch by inch, but you can get there. But don't give up and go backwards. Are you getting my point yet? Say with me today, we're going forward. We're going forward. Not backwards. Come on, this is a promise. I've read the Bible how many times? I never knew that was there. I don't know how many of you read that before, going, but they went backwards and not forward. I cannot even remember reading that. And I thought, God, man, can, hey, when did I see this? They went backwards and not forward. Guys, they never got to the land of Canaan. And they went backwards. Now, how did they go backwards? Let's quickly have a look what they did wrong. Um, De De Deuteronomy, for the English-speaking people, Deuteronomy. And for these people down there going, Deuteronomy. Chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 19, if it's okay. I'm so glad that she can do that. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Moses says to the children of Israel, okay, let me tell you what happened. You guys are complete, you guys are worrying now, you're stressing out. Let me tell you what happened. He said, we departed from Hobe. We went through all the great terrible wilderness which you saw on the way to the mountain of the Amorite. As the Lord our God had commanded us, then we came to Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea. In verse 20, and I said to you, as Moses saying, he said, I, 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 I told you people, you have come to the mountains of the Amorites. Look at me quickly, everybody. Here's the mountains of the Amorites. Moses said, we came to the mountains of the Amorites. There we were. And I said to you, which is, uh, which Lord our God has given us. In verse 22, and I said to you, look, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go and possess it. That was the land of Canaan, the promised land. They promised. I said, there's the land. Go and take it. As the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you. Do not be afraid and do not get discouraged. Why did he say that? Because he knows that when you're on your way to your promise, Satan's going to come with some red sea, something's going to pop up that's going to give foot fear in you and get you discouraged. And guess what? You're going to go back. You're going to think God doesn't love you. God doesn't want to heal your wife. God doesn't want to get your children off drugs. I'll never ever get my finances fixed, etc., etc. I'll just stick out with this old problem. I just got to sit there. Well, then you sit there, Baba, but I've decided I'm going to get out of this problem and I'm going to the promise. And you can go backwards if you want, but I'm going forward. And I told my wife, we are going forward and we are going to fight and fight, which we've been doing as well. But I've never realized that, hey, sometimes I take a step backwards, but then I just got to go forward again. So we kept in verse 22. And, and then one of you came to me and said, let's send men before us and search out the land. And God never told them to send spies into the land of Canaan, but it wasn't a bad idea. I was in the military. It's good to go and send spies and just check it out and see you know, how big the cities are, how many people there are. We're going to go in there. We're going to take the land. They just spy it out and see which is the best way to go. So there was nothing wrong. And, and bring that word to us on, on the way by which we should go up and of the cities into which we shall come. In verse 23, so Moses thought the plan pleased him well. He took 12 uh, men, one of each of the tribes, and he sent them in. They departed, went up to the mountains, and they came to the valley of Israel and spied out the land of Canaan. And they also took some food, and just keep the scripture there, listen to this, of the land in their hands and brought it down to us, and they brought back word to us saying, yeah, it's a good land. It's a good promise which God has given us. Just keep it right there. Can you, do you know what the Israelites did? They went, the, the, those spies went in there, looked, spied out the country, the promised land, brought back fruit. Said, God, look, look at the fruit. Isn't it good? Oh, man, God's given us a great land. You know that some of you do it? You just did that this morning, man. You stood up and you said, yeah. Look how good God is. Amen. My children didn't, the, the house wasn't touched. They were safe. They can go back. She showed us the fruit of what you guys prayed for. Am I right? What was God's promise? That he could protect people. Now there are people that got hurt and people that got damaged. 
And but still, you're alive. I mean, you can rebuild the house, but you're still alive. Amen. And why did other people die? Because Satan just comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We don't know if they prayed. We don't know what they believed. We nothing. You, everybody's got to work out their own salvation with the Lord. But you this morning, man, stood up and showed the people the fruit of God's protection. There's some of you here that were sick. There's some of you that had cancer that has gotten up and said, look, God can heal people. And you show the people the fruit of the promise. And guess what? Guess what? We still sometimes do what these dumb, blonde Israelites do. Look what they do in verse 26. Nevertheless, another American word you can just put in there is that once again, but you would not go up. You rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. The first thing that the Israelites did wrong, why they did not go and get the land, they were disobedient. And let me tell you this morning, if you want to go forward in life, you want to go forward in, in, in your finances and getting healed and getting off drugs and forward in, in the church, you cannot be disobedient to the word of God. Come on, we read it this now when G, uh, God, God said it, uh, to Jeremiah, they did not obey my word. I told them, listen to my word, do what I say, and you'll be good with you, I'll be your God, you'll be my people. But they did not obey, they went over uh, according to their own evil hearts. You see, people do their own things, and, and they're disobedient to what the Word says, and then we dare turn around and accuse God. Why is God not doing it? Disobedience will stop anybody and everything from going forward. Oh, oh you got financial problems? Why aren't you paying tithes? You don't pay tithes, well then you're disobedient to the word of God. You won't be able to go forward with your finances. Oh, you've got lung cancer? Have you stopped smoking? Well, I've been smoking since, since I was young. I had a woman say that to me one day. I've been smoking, young man. I, she, she called me a young man. I thought, hmm, I like you, baby. She said, I've been smoking for years. I've smoked since I was 14 years old. I'm 76 years old right now. I've got emphysema, and I like my smoking, and I almost probably die of smoking. But you, young man, you just pray that God will heal my emphysema. <laughs> I felt like saying, come here, but let me just give you a five-fold ministry. Put you in the slap line. You all know we've got a slap line and a prayer line. I think I told you that last year. There's got to be a slap line for some people before you pray for them. <laughs> because some people like that, you've got to switch the slap a bit. How dumb! You're not going to go forward and get your healing if you're disobedient. And there's many other things that God tells us to do, and we don't do it. Oh, the church has got to grow. We don't know why. Are you witnessing? Are you testifying? Are you telling people about your church? Or are you just, well, God's going to fill it up. No, God's not going to fill up the church. You have got to go and witness. You have got to tell people. Yeah. You've got to spread the gospel of peace. God's not going to spread the gospel of peace. He's given you the gospel of peace. And you and I got it. Yeah, but we don't like the church anymore. But you don't like the church? Well, then change. I have Christians say, I don't like that church anymore. Well, then change. Yeah. What do you mean? Because you are the church. Come on. What, you don't like the building? Because the children, the building's not the church. I, I hear people say, I, don't, I, I just don't like my church anymore. Well, then you don't like yourself because you are the church, brother. Amen. Well, they've got so much problems in our church. Well, maybe you're part of the problems. Why don't you just change? If you want the church to change, then you and I've got to change because we are the church. So we go, yeah, well, we're going nowhere. Well, what are we doing? We're just staying where we are. Well, well, then you've got to change and say, let's go forward. Somebody's got to go forward. Am I hurting people now? 
It doesn't help all the other people. I mean, like, some of you might not even come back. But it's okay. I want you to go forward. And I want you to go with me. And if, don't be disobedient. Because people that are disobedient, they are disobedient to God's word. And people that are disobedient, do you know what disobedient people do? They start complaining. Look at the next verse. Moses says, you, you rebel. And then you complain. See, people that are disobedient complain. Why? Because when you're disobedient, you don't get your house down in Orange Beach. You don't drive a Chevrolet truck. Which is Christian like people. <laughs> you don't have money because you're disobedient. You still sit because you because you're not doing what God tells you to do. <laughs> and because we disobedient, now we start complaining. Why is God not healing us? Why is God not letting me drive a Chevrolet? Why should I drive a Ford? Well, I told you last time, why not? <clears throat> Sell the Ford and buy a Chevrolet and become a Christian. All right. My children are still on drugs. Well, stop drugging. Well, why, why is my marriage bad then? Stop watching pornography. Well, stop looking at other people's wives. Love your wife, not the neighbor's wife. Amen. It doesn't say that in the Bible. You've got to love your wife as Christ loved the church. So we, we're disobedient, we leave a complaint. Why is it God? Why? And we start whining God. But it's not God. It's what you and I are not doing. We are following our own evil hearts, our own desires, and pushing out what God said we should be doing. And then when we don't get the promise, then we accuse God and we start complaining. Who do people complain against? Against each other. You complain in your tents to each other. And you say, because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the land of Amorite. Where did you ever read that God told Moses, Moses, Take my people out of Egypt. I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the land of Canaan. That's the promised land. Take the people out of Egypt and take them to the promised land because I hate them. Where did you read that? It's not written in the book. So where did they get that scripture? Where did they get that trash? They got it because they were disobedient. And when you're disobedient, your mind goes against God's mind. Your thought life goes against God. And you start talking this nonsense. God wants to kill us. He hates us. And people, I hear Christians say, well, God healed her husband and saved her husband, but not my husband. Why did, why did Jeanette not die and he saved her, but my wife died? Or my child, I, hey, I don't have the answers. I just know one thing. When my wife was sick, we bombarded heaven. And God saved her. Now, but what if she died? Let me tell you something. I would have hated it if my wife had died. I would have most probably cried and cried and what have you and, and, and done everything that everybody does when somebody dies. But after doing everything that I possibly could do, if she had died, I would have accepted that it was her time. Because whatever I ask in Jesus' name, my God will do. But I don't know if it's her time I can ask in Jesus. If God doesn't give her extra time like Hezekiah, then it's her time to go. Or he gives her a choice like he did. Do you want to go or do you want to stay? And we don't know what expires between people and between God that's lying on the deathbed. We don't know. So don't accuse God and don't be, you know, and sometimes we don't pray enough. We don't even, sometimes people are lying on deathbeds. They are terminal sick. And you know what we do? We still, please God, I'm asking you, please heal them. We don't fast. We don't read the word. We just, we don't, we don't want to do anything more than we're just doing. We, and when we disobedient, sometimes, what did Jesus say to them? Hey, there's something that you've got to fast and pray for. Because that demon of death, that spirit of cancer, wants to kill this person. Fast. Oh, how can I miss a, a, a meal, man? I'm gonna, oh, I can't miss a meal. You can't miss a meal for your loved one that's busy dying. You understand what I'm saying? And sometimes we're disobedient. Sometimes we don't do. But, Hansi, what if, uh, I mean, do people get sick every time because we're disobedient? No. If you are walking in obedience, like I believe Jeanette and I are doing, and, and, the, and they're still sick, 
Then you've got to know it's just the dead devil attacking you, and you just got to go through this fight, man. You just got to fight and fight and fight. Because like I said, he's not going to give up. He's here on earth. He wants to destroy all of us and hurt us and steal from us. But make sure that your disobedience does not lead to com com complaining, and that causes us from not getting our promise and not going forward. And can we complain? Come on, church. Yeah. Oh, boy. When the air condition is too hot, then it's, why is it too hot? Then it's too cold. Then someone is lower, then someone is higher. Then, you know, then the music too loud, then the music too soft. Then it's too quick, and then it's too slow soft. We are such good complainers. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, it says, And when the people complained against God, it displeased him. Be with me. Complaining displeases God. So people that are disobedient starts complaining. Have you? You know what I'm talking about? Do you, do you know where I'm going with this? Because I've been there. I've been disobedient. And I've complained to God. And God said, but you didn't do what I told you. So just fix it. And people that are disobedient will, com will start complaining. People that complain, you know what they do then? They listen to people and not to God's promise. Next verse, verse 28. After complaining, Moses said to them, Then you said, where can we go up? Our brothers have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people are greater and taller than we, the cities are greater, fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakin there. You know who, who, who they listened to? To the ten spies. How many spies were there? Twelve. Two of them came back, Joshua and Caleb, tore their clothes and said, Come on, we can go forward. It's a good land. Look at the fruit. God will take care of the giants and of the city. And the other ten spies said, oh, no, we're not. Oh, we cannot go in there. Those big giants, those big cities. Duh, dummies. God just opened the Red Sea for you. Killed the Egyptians. Gave you manna. Gave you quail out of the air. Gave you water out of a rock. And you think God cannot take care of giants? You see, what they do is they ignore the promise of God and what God can do, and they listen to people. And many times you and I listen to people instead of holding on to the promise of what God's Word says. Can I give you an example? God says you can heal them, all right? You are healed by his stripes. So you go to the doctor. You know what the doctor tells you? Well, you'll most probably die from a heart attack one day because your grandfather had heart problems. Father had got heart problems. You got heart problems. You got to die from it. Now that's a fact. That's true. That's what the doctor's giving you, the fact, the medical fact. Now you've got two choices. You're either going to listen to him or you're going to listen to the promise of God. Amen. I know that's the fact. But the truth, the word of God is the truth, am I right? A truth nullifies a fact easy as that. The fact says you can die from a heart attack. The truth says you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Which one are you going to believe? If you believe the people, guess what? You're not going to go forward and receive your healing. You're going to go back and say, well, there's nothing I can do. Just got to wait and die. That's how it functions. Well, they do that if you want to do that, but I'm not going to do that. My brother, I lost two of my brothers last year, died in one year, six months apart. One was three years younger than me, and one was six year, years younger than me. Smoked and drank and got everything that they did. So then I drink and smoke. But I stopped 30 years ago. They did not stop. Both of them died from heart, pancreas, lung problems, emphysema, you, COPD, you call it. They had everything. So my sister calls me and she said, I said to her, well, what, you know, just asked her because they're in, they're in Africa. Tell me exactly what happened. Oh, this is what happened. And she said, and, uh, Hansi, remember one thing, we stains, that's our last name, stains, uh, all the stains have had heart problems, so we're all going to die from heart problems. <laughs> and my sister's saved. She's born again, saved Christian. You see how Christians talk? I said to her, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, her name's Ellen. I said, Ellen, just stop right there. 
I said, I'm not going to die from a heart attack. You can die from a heart attack if you want to. But I'm not going to. But Hansi, we all had problems. Oh, dad and mom. And I said, I know, but I've cut the curse. Hallelujah. I said, I'm a, I'm a brand new child of God. Look, the old things have passed away. I'm a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Yeah but, uh, uh, yeah, but the curse stays. I said, no, it's cut off. you taking back that curse. The devil's putting it back on you and you believe in his life. Now you're speaking it and you're believing it and you'll most probably do it. Well, I don't know. Yes, you can break it. I had a teacher quickly. If you can break it, pray with her and broke that heart problem over her. Because she's taking heart problems, uh, uh, heart pills. I never knew she was taking heart pills. So she's trying to put it, see how the devil will try and put it back on you? So if I had accepted that, just like they did, they listened to the people and not to God's promise. They should have said, it doesn't matter, why are we getting discouraged? Because the people told us about the big cities and the, and the giants said, it doesn't matter, God's going to wipe it out because the promise says that we go into the plan of Canaan. That's what God has promised you. Go and take your promise. Yeah, but what if Janetta died there? We, what, we all were praying for it. Then she would have got a healing in heaven. Amen. So you didn't pray for nothing. She still gets her healing, but not on earth, just in heaven, because it was her time to go. Why are we so worried about that? The people that are disobedient will complain. And when they complain, then they'll get discouraged because they listen to other people and not to God's promise. Come on, guys. What does he say? What happens to discouraged people? Then I say to you, don't be terrified or be afraid. Once again, Moses said, I told you, don't be afraid. Go forward, guys. Keep on going. I say, the Lord your God will go before you and fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness, where you saw the Lord, how he carried you as a man carries his son. In all the way that you went until you came to this place, through the Red Sea, with the manna, with the meat, with the water, everything, verse 33. Uh, and yet, number 32, for all of this, Moses said, you did not believe the Lord your God. Listen to me. People that are disobedient will complain. And when they complain, they'll listen to people and get discouraged. And when they're discouraged, they have unbelief. Have you ever been dis discouraged? I think I preached on discouraged in your church last year. When you are discouraged, you cannot believe that God will heal you. You cannot believe that God will fix your children and get them off drugs. You cannot believe your husband or your wife can get saved because you're so discouraged because you've listened to people. And when you're discouraged, then you will have unbelief. And when you have unbelief as a Christian, and don't tell me that you don't have unbelief, because I've had unbelief as well. I don't think God can do this. Come on, be honest with me. Have you ever been there where you thought, man, I wonder if God's going to do this? And, and there's unbelief. Doubt comes. Unbelief comes. We, we've all had it. We've all gone, gone, gone through it. But thank heavens, no, 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 no. God can do it. No, no, God can do it. But these guys didn't believe it. They believed that God couldn't take care of giants and a big city, God can open the Red Sea and give them a, a quail falling out of the air and, and the manna and bread and stuff and water out of a rock, but you can't take care of a few giants. Come on. How dumb. But that's what most of us are doing. And that, when you get to that unbelieving point, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. And our faith just goes right by it. And we walk by what we see and not by faith. Now we're in a problem. N number five, the last one. People that are disobedient will complain. Complain towards people about God. And then they'll listen to the people's junk and negativity. And they'll get discouraged. And when they're discouraged, they have no faith. They get into unbelief. And when they're in unbelief, guess what, they have, what, what happens next? Verse 33. We went in the way before you to search out the place for you to pitch your tents to show you the way that you should go in the fire by night and the cloud by day. He's still telling them how God helped them. Verse 35. And the Lord heard, or 34, sorry. Number five. And the Lord heard the sound of your words. And I've, I have preached on this in your church before. And was angry 
And he took an oath and he said in verse 35, not one of these men of this evil generation shall see that good land of which I swore to give to their fathers. What happened, number five? They opened their big fat mouths and they spoke themselves out of the land of Canaan, yeah. out of the land of their blessing. Their mouths spoke them out of it. And guess what did they say? Can you remember what they said? It's, it, it, it's Christina, right? Carissa. 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 My baby, you are doing excellent. If you can, Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, just go there. And then uh, verse, and that same verse 14, 27, 28, 29. Okay. Numbers 14, verse 1 and 2. Do you remember what they said? God said, I heard the voice. I heard the words that you spoke. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. Verse 2. And all the children of Israel complained. Yes, all right, there comes a complaint again. Against who did they complain? Against Moses and Aaron. About who did they complain? About God. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Look at me. They were on the mountain of the Amorites. They just had to go in and take their promise. Guess what they do? They say, it's rather better to go back to Egypt, backwards, or even to the middle of the desert. Let's die there. And they refused to go forward. That's where those words come in when God said to Jeremiah, they went backwards and not forwards. That's right. Why? Because they said, they said we should die in Egypt or in the land, in the desert. So in, in, in that same Numbers 14, verse 27, <clears throat> how long shall I be with this evil congregation, God said to Moses, who complained against me. I've heard their complaints, which the children of Israel make against me. Verse 28. So, say to them, Moses, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, that's what's going to happen to you. God didn't let the Israelites die in the desert. They spoke it, and God has was set up with them. Verse 29. The carcasses of you who have complained against me and have spoken that evil word shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above. Only the children went in afterwards. So what, how did these guys go backwards and not forward? Well, they were disobedient. If they had and complained, then they listened to people got discouraged. Then they had unbelief. If they had there said, God, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. It's like, man, we just totally mixed up here, God. Sorry we didn't take the land and we listened to people. We got discouraged and, uh, man, our faith just went down. God, everybody's faith falls down. God would have, would have forgiven them. But you know what made God really fed up? Instead of give, getting up and saying, God can do it, this is what they did. They spoke death and not life. They did not come up and the, the good fruit that we should speak about, they ignored the promise. They ignored everything. And God said, that's it. I'll, I'll just have it out of it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you this morning. Don't you dare speak yourself out of a healing, out of a blessing, out of a deliverance, out of restoration, out of protection. Don't you dare do that. And say, well, you know, I'll just, I'm saved. Yeah. you saved. You're going to go to heaven. But guess what? You're going to walk all your years as a saved, born again, going to go to heaven, Christian, but you're going to be a desert walking Christian. You're going to walk around in the desert. Never get your healing, never be blessed, never have a good marriage, always fighting, arguing with your wife, your children, drugs, addiction, whatever you are. You're always going to be bound up right here. You're never going to get your land of promises. Because you're speaking that you cannot get it. You're speaking that God cannot do it. Uh, and then you most probably will die from a heart attack or from diabetes or whatever you believe the doctor said or your family said. And we have a bunch of desert walking Christians that are happy because they know they go to heaven and you've got to go to heaven. But I just don't want to go to heaven. I want my promises. 
But are you naming and claiming? Yes. Because on the cross, Jesus paid a price for my salvation, for forgiving me, for healing me, for delivering me. Everything that Satan throws against me was covered on the cross. It's already paid for. I just got to go get it. I'm not, I'm, not claiming, I'm not saying, Lord, make me a millionaire. I'm just saying, Lord, bless me financially that I can have a good car, have a nice house, or an RV, or look after my wife. I don't have to battle. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to be a millionaire. Millionaires can go to hell. Yeah. Lord, and, and, and what, what, is it bad to claim healing? Jesus died for my healing. Of course I'm going to say, yes, it's mine. But what if you don't get it? Then I'll get it in heaven. But I'm not going to go down without a fight. Amen. Some of us are just going backwards and just sitting there and, 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 and the devil doesn't even worry about you and me anymore. Because we're just sitting there saying, wow, well, that's it. And we accept it. Mm. Is that what we should have read there? We should have read this. And God said to Moses, take the people out of Egypt to the land of Canaan. Oh, and there's a Red Sea. And the Egyptians are following them. I opened the Red Sea and they went through and killed the Egyptians. Then they were hungry and I gave them manna. Then they wanted meat and I gave them quail. And then they wanted water and I put water out of the rock. They, the, the, the shoes didn't wear out. None of them were sick. N nothing bad happened to them. And they got to the mountains of the Amorites and we sent in spies and they came back and said, oh, they're giants and they're big cities. But the people said, who cares about giants? Who cares about cities? God is going to take care of it. Let's go take our promise. That's what we should have read in the Bible. Now we're reading everything right up until the end. And guess what the Israelites did? Their mouths rewrote history. They rewrote their future. We should have read how they went into the land of Canaan and God had blessed them and gave them rest. It was the land of rest. But now we're reading. They did not go in. They followed their own evil hearts. And they spoke. We should have died in Egypt. Let's go back and die in the, in the desert. And none of them went in there. That's not how God wanted the word to read. But people changed the whole thing. And we do the same thing, church. And then blame God. Everybody say, I'm going forward. No, you've got to be a bit more bold than that. Say, I'm going forward. I'm not backwards. Say, I'm not going to be disobedient. Are you serious? Someone stop complaining. Say it, someone stop complaining. You see, some of them don't say it because they don't believe they're complaining. Say, I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm not going to have unbelief. I'm going to walk by faith. Doesn't matter what I see, I'm going to watch my mouth. So I'm going forward, not backwards. Give me all a clap. Come and stand with me.